Yo guys, Punk Rod another video. So, in the last video I made, I spoke about my favorite secret locations within the game in Classic, and in that video, I covered some unfinished zones which were potentially planned as future raid content in Classic, but never actually came to be. As a tangent to that video, I figured the only logical follow-up would be to talk about the potentiality of Blizzard patching in endgame content post Naxxramas to expand on the vanilla experience without delegitimizing the base vanilla content like an expansion would by increasing the level cap and making previous zones negligible. See, that's one of the big issues, right? I, I think that whenever the, we, we, the pinch, potentiality, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, this. well, no, I, I want to at least hear what the guy has to say. Like, yeah, he did the response video. I thought some of the things he said were kind of dumb. It was a little bit accusatory, right? But, I mean, at the end of the day, like, people always forget about this because, you know, people are always, like, so invested in, like, I don't know, uh you know their team but everybody here like everybody here wants the same thing everybody wants the game to get better it's not like he's sitting there he's like i can't wait to figure out what video can i make to ruin classic wow we just disagree on the way to get there that's all there is to it so you need to remember everybody here is on the same side not alex sensual Well, look, man, I'm sure Kronos 4 is going to release sometime soon, and uh, he'll finally have a place to play, okay? Yeah, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll have a place to play. And the best thing about that, right, is... Like, the, uh, the ironic thing about Alex is Alex broke all of the news and everything about, like, what was that shitty server that was selling gold? Uh, it wasn't like Exodus. What was it? Uh, I forgot what it was called. Uh, the shitty server. So I don't, yeah, I forgot what it was. Elysium. Yeah, Elysium. Selling gold. And he was right. Like, Alex was right. And it's like, we have to give credit where credit is due. He exposed those fuckers. And, hey. <laughs> he was... <laughs> Uh, not with everything, but with that, he certainly was. With the release of a brand new zone, like Outland. Personally, I really like the Burning Crusade. I might even say that it's probably my favorite expansion. It's so hard to decide between vanilla and BC. Yeah. But I also understand how flying mounts affected world PvP negatively, and how badge if gear vendors created a catch-up system that hurt lower-end content within the game. I don't think badge vendors were bad. Um, I, I understand why like somebody can have a perspective that badge vendors are bad, but I think that there should be some gear that you can work towards that's more deterministic, that's not drop-based, right? And uh, I, I think that maybe towards the end of BC, this is something I can say, towards the end of BC, because there were so many badge vendors put together, you effectively didn't have to do anything except for like the last, you didn't really need to do Karazhan anymore. And I, I didn't really like that a lot. So maybe the badge vendors did outpace the gear uh, that BC had a little bit too much. But the idea of badge vendors, especially at the beginning of the expansion, whenever BC first came out, I thought the badge vendors were amazing. They, they were great in my mind. It's hard to say exactly which one of the two versions of the game is the most popular. If you look at sub numbers, yeah. they were much higher in TBC and Wrath of the Lich King, but this could very well be just a large portion of the player base missing out on vanilla because it was wow and it's yeah, early it was new. rise, essentially. On the that other side, sense. if we look at private servers, I think vanilla is probably the most sought after version of the game. Knowing Easy. this level of demand for the vanilla experience, it seems rather reasonable for Blizzard to potentially expand on vanilla by creating even more depth to the late game experience rather than immediately pursuing progressive expansion releases. If you actively played World of Warcraft back in the vanilla days, then you're most likely aware of some of the secret zones that were under construction during that time. That's true. Although most of these zones were hidden from the player base, that didn't stop people from finding them and leaking their findings to the public. And getting banned. With those leaks, Massive speculation overcame the World of Warcraft community. As a kid obsessed with the world of Azeroth, I always thought places like Hyjal, the Emerald Dream, the Karazhan Crypt, Aldum, the Caverns of Time, would become part of the vanilla yeah. experience. Sadly, however, in January 2007, it seemed as though with the release of the Burning Crusade, those dreams had come to an end. Well, they brought out, uh, like, every single example there, right? Like, let me see. Uh... Yeah, every single example there is put into the game, right? Caverns of Time, uh, Emerald Dream. You went to the Emerald Dream at the end of uh, Emerald Nightmare. Uh, and it's like all of them were put into the game. 
uh, the crypts. The crypts are actually a part of, uh, they're a part of some of the artifact quest lines. And not the crypts, the old crypts, but like the new crypts are part of the artifact quest line. And then also the crypts are integrated with the lucid nightmare uh, secret finding thing. So they're, they actually are part of the game now. And uh, it's artifact? Yeah, artifact, exactly. Um, I, I don't know, like, I like the idea that Blizzard put content in the game that wouldn't actually be released for like five more years. That's pretty cool. But uh, I wish they did that more, actually. Uh, it's kind of boring that they don't do that more. I mean, not entirely, I guess, because you could count Caverns of Time and Hygel being implemented within it. But nonetheless, it's not exactly what I think a lot of us were looking for in terms of Hygel. I think a lot of us thought it would be a zone with raids and all kinds of stuff going on within it. But instead, it was just one a lot of people would say pretty cruddy raid within the caverns of time. So let's go through some of the potential content yep. patches that could potentially precede Naxxramas if the player base and Blizzard are behind it. Firstly, I'd say the Karazhan Crypt. The Crypt seems like the most obvious one to me, to be honest. It can easily- No, they shouldn't do the Crypt. Like, they, sh they shouldn't do that. I got, because it would it'd be like for thematic reasons, right? I mean, here's why. They just did Nax. Like, if they wanted to make content following Nax, like, let's do something different than a Scourge thing or, like, a Skeletal thing. Let's, let's do something a little bit more unique, right? It, it's just, like, they, they're, they're too close in theme in my, in my mind, right? ...be a precursor yeah, to the Dragon itself, Isles. That'd be without fucking interfering awesome. with that progression into the Burning Crusade. And it also has a very awesome, gloomy, old dungeon vibe that'd to be it. be awesome. If you ever quested in Duskwood and yeah. conquered some of the underground caves over there, the ones with the ghouls and skeletons, the ones that have the mob called the Rotten One, yep. you know just how exploring those caves feel. They feel epic, truly epic. I don't know about that. The epic. beauty of the game back then was that it didn't try too hard. It was organic, relatable, no, it, it was human. Similar to the movie industry nowadays, you know, things have gotten way more flashy, way more fancy with crazy effects what do you mean? You don't and environmental want to see the next design. Spider-Man movie? But I wouldn't necessarily say on, that man. movies have gotten better over the years. No, I wouldn't either. We have no confirmation. Classic WoW is just nostalgia, mate. <laughs> what the fuck? If you look at raids nowadays, they wow. tend to be so oversaturated with details, sculptures, magical essence, and crazy architecture throughout. But I feel like that's not always necessary. Nope. Why does every single raid experience have to be sieging some magnificent magical temple or some- And the reason, I know what he's saying is completely fucking true, man. Because how much time do you think it takes them to make Surma or something? It takes them forever. They made Molten Core in a week. Like, l let's see some more basic content. But let's just have more of it. We want more content. Nobody gives a fuck about the architecture. Who cares about that trash? We want a good game. Fell powered monolith of a structure. Yeah. Why can't we just raid a massive underground cave with tons of zombies and spooky fucking, creatures? Give us a good game. Why can't we just raid a massive rocky spider's lair with webs and eggs all over? Yeah. Does it really have to be some Nerubian castle? I mean, sure, it can be sometimes. It can be extravagant sometimes, sure. But why so can't they spend it just all their be time gritty on. and rugged other times? I envision a Karazhan crypt with skeleton warrior bosses and ghoul bosses, maybe a worm boss, a spider boss, a necromancer boss. To me, that truly screams World of Warcraft. It screams classic. It screams wow. This next one also seems quite obvious to me. It's Aldum and Tanneris. You know in South Tanneris, that massive gate that's guarded by those elite rock creatures? This is in the same line as the Karazhan crypt. I don't feel like the giants of Aldum ever got their just due. If you look at what Alden became in Cataclysm, it became sort of like an Egyptian cultural appropriation representation with like Will Smith genies all over the place in every dungeon. My question yeah. is, why couldn't we just get some massive raid with, a, you know, just a massive dungeon with rocky colossus enemies stomping on your main tank with their Shaquille O'Neal sized feet? I mean, okay. don't get me wrong, I have no issue with the pyramids or Egyptian lore or whatever, but this is World of Warcraft, not National Geographic. Giants are a They've used, I mean, let's be real. They've used so many different things from the, like, other stories and other mythologies. I don't know if we can really say that, you know, Warcraft, it's like, okay, just because they're using another theme is okay. I, I would like to see, if they were going to do anything with Oldham and Vanilla WoW, what I'd like to see is an extra zone with a raid in it.
right? And like have the zone be more of uh, kind of like a Titan Ruins in the way that like kind of a, a mix between Oldham and uh, Cataclysm and Old Man. You know, with the theme of Old Man, with the scale and scope of Oldham. Uh, I, I would love to see that. It'd be fucking amazing. Uh, Old War? Well, it wouldn't be Old War. It would be more of a, uh, I, I don't know, more of like an ancient thing. Like Old War is like very mechanical and everything. Uh, I don't want to see something that's very mechanical. I want to see something that's like much more, like, I don't know, like rudimentary. Huge part of World of Warcraft. You see them in Ashara, Molten Core, Fairless, amongst other zones. And in general, they're such a classic fantasy creature. They're simple, sure, but sometimes the beauty is in the simplicity. Yep. And I feel like this should have been a raid in Classic. I'll say it again, the Giants never got their just due. This raid could easily be implemented within World of Warcraft Classic without having any negative repercussions on the lineage going into the Burning Crusade. I don't think it would have any negative impact yeah. on Cataclysm either, specifically because it would just be a one-off raid with a bunch of Colossals in it. But even if it did have a negative impact on Cataclysm, Cataclysm wasn't worth the installation disc that it was written on. <laughs> and I've checked my demographics. I know a lot of you guys know what a CD-ROM is. Kids don't watch World of Warcraft videos. See, this is like, this is basically my demographic too. Like most people, like I have probably a little bit more people that are younger, right? Since like my content's around BFA too. Uh, but mostly, yeah, and if you if you go to my female audience, like, I, I think I can maybe show you guys. I, I've showed this before. Like, my female audience, I think, is less than 1%. Like, there are basically no girls that watch my videos. You are you are in a sausage fest right now with a bunch of other sweaty dudes scratching their ball sacks, watching, watching another dude talk about WoW. Okay, like, I'm actually serious. Hell yeah, 1%. No, I, I'll pull it up after this, if you guys remind me. I'll, I'll pull up my analytics, and I'll show you guys. God, we're becoming geezers, boys. Sticking Shut in Tanneris, I'm going to make this one real quick, but Shut why up. not utilize the Caverns of Time? The Caverns of Time, I feel like, has the most flexibility when it comes to creating content. Because okay. you could pretty much go back in time to whatever historical event and make it viable content. There's tons of events that could take place within the Cavern. If we dip into Warcraft 3 lore or the books, for example, you have the, the destruction of Alterac, the War of the Shifting Sands where we could seal the Scarab Wall, oh, the Siege shit. of Theramore, I mean many more. If you guys have any good ideas on this, leave them in the comment section. I feel another untapped well in vanilla is definitely the Scarlet Crusade. Fuck yeah. Scarlet Monastery there should be a Scarlet is Crusade, one of the right. most infamous dungeons in Classic Fuck Wild. yeah. It's one that I think everyone remembers. I feel like the Crusade can easily be set up as an antagonist for endgame content. Hell yeah. There's a spot east in Eastern Plaguelands where all like, there's this little I, Scarlet I this Stronghold too. with level 55 plus mobs, yep. which could easily become the location for the raid itself. Yep. The lore of the Scarlet Crusade is super old school, and again, similar to what I said earlier, it screams WoW Classic. Fuck yeah. I also think the there's art style is you know, very Scarlet gothic Crusade. European with red and gold color palette. Yep. It's, it's just great. It's, it feels so epic when you're in Scarlet Monastery. You know, sieging massive cathedrals, as well as, you know, the outdoor bosses or potentially connecting the outdoor with the indoor, similar to what you see again in Scarlet Monastery, yeah, but they in a 40 it. man setting, could be really great. The only thing that would suck, however, is not having holy protection potions. And you know that there's going to be holy damage in that dungeon or raid. I mean, there is a holy protection potion, but it's not a greater holy protection potion. It only absorbs like 200 or like 500 damage. So The next one on my mind is Hygel. Hydro was a massive zone, probably one of the biggest in vanilla. I don't know what they even do in that way when you were in it exploring. Yeah. There was an Onyxia style raid entrance at the bottom of a massive cliff in one of the areas. And back in 2006, when I first discovered Hygel, I remember seeing this and thinking to myself, oh man, we're about to get this real epic raid. You know, this is going to be a whole new zone with all kinds of new content. But unfortunately, Hygel was put on hold till pretty much Cataclysm, at least as a zone within Azeroth. I was disappointed where it became in a pretty Hygel. lame questing zone and it had it a pretty out. lame raid, in my opinion. I feel like the zone could be utilized oh, as a more. massive content patch in vanilla, where a server-wide event similar to what happened with the AQ40 gates or like the Scourge invasion for uh, Naxxramas where calls right heroes right to the zone in order to achieve right some there. sort of, you know, um, right fucking unified there. goal between Horde and Alliance. And again, cool this can be easily done without affecting the lineage of Boys expansions, so especially lazy. considering um, the Hydro Raid and the Burning Crusade is part of the Caverns of Time where you're going Fuck back yeah. in time for the Battle of Mount Hydro. It doesn't really affect the actual zone in the present, or at least maybe it could a bit, but not much. Another easy one, which is just another massive unutilized zone, is Ashara, and specifically the Ashara Crater. This zone is so expansive and epic 
But there's not much to do there other than kill a world boss and maybe pick up some dream for a mountain silver sage. The Shower Crater was an unreleased battleground that Blizzard pretty much fully assembled in Classic, but never actually released be it because it was apparently too big. I don't see how too big is ever a problem, to be honest, in World of Warcraft, but I mean, why not take that concept? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, like, imagine doing Alterac Valley with no mounts. Except and run with it for some more late game content. I mean, look at this place. It's epic. Ashara has yeah. a connection to giants, Naga, I never even noticed uh, the beasts, dragon. satyr, dragons. Holy shit. The zone is absolutely beautiful. I Arguably one of the most beautiful zones in Classic Fuck WoW. Yeah, dude. So much lost potential here, in my opinion. And that can easily be rectified yeah. with a post Naxxramas edition. The last spot that comes to mind is the Emerald Dream. And this is one that I probably feel the closest to. I mentioned that in my video where I was talking about my top favorite secret zones back in vanilla. Blizzard was actually working on a raid within the Emerald Dream in vanilla. The Emerald Dream is a special place for druids in the lore. It was constantly mentioned in the books and in the story involving Illidan and his brother Malfurion. The Emerald Dream, I believe, has a very special and unique place in the hearts of all classic World of Warcraft fans. Fuck yeah. I mean, anybody that played Warcraft 3. When the Emerald Dream footage got leaked, back I think in around 2006, I remember being so excited about the potential of a massive raid in a fluorescent lush forest. A goliath of a raid where you would need a mount just to get around effectively. Wouldn't it be great seeing all the poor casuals trailing behind on their 60% mount as you guys charge to the next raid boss on your epic mounts? I mean, that's just pure elitism. All right, so I mean, I'm sure there's the a best. lot of other locations that could probably be always, utilized for always post go for content. Elitism. But off the top of my head, these are the main outliers, Holy shit. mainly because these spots had major speculation surrounding them back in the vanilla days as possible raid zones for the future. As a kid, I very often thought about these spots with such high hopes, and to be honest, I'm kind of feeling those those hopes re-emerging with Classic being right around the corner. These hopes might actually be founded in some sort of reality at this point. There was an interview with one of the Blizzard devs, Patrick Dawson, and in this interview he said this, Anything is on the table. This is a love letter to our oh, fans. Oh, we watched this. If the fans yeah. have a desire for something, it would absolutely be considered. Yeah, we watched this. We're certainly not planning to do that today, but if people want more, we can talk about that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. If we as a community want to see this happen, and we rally behind it, it'll happen. We just got to band together and make our voices heard. Just as we did to get Classic WoW in the first place. That's what got us here. Probably the most important thing on my mind in respect to this, however, is the design philosophy. If Blizzard in the modern day was to design classic content, I feel so strongly that they would have to keep it, well, classic. My worry is that if they did release new vanilla content, mm -hmm. there's a good chance that they would probably overthink it and overstep the boundaries, potentially releasing raid content that resembles some of the raid layouts, art styles, you know, mechanics that we see in the modern day. This to me would be the death of classic. It could I feel be. it necessary that they would have to almost relearn old tricks they would have to almost in their minds like regress go back to the retro game dev style you know what i mean ba go back in time Hire and create all the content old devs again. that seamlessly merges within classic wow in the world of art cohesiveness of style is important you can't mix two opposing art styles together the same goes for game design i'd like to see lower poly lower texture resolution raids with old style raid mechanics Maybe slightly modernized raid mechanics, but nothing past TBC raid feel, you know, if anything. Nax Ramus is my favorite raid of all time. I feel like if they use that as a model for creating any new content, they can't possibly go wrong. That raid was flawless. I think if Blizzard executes on it properly, we could have a resurrection of our most cherished game and beyond, and a resurrection of the true MMO experience in a unique way, in a new way, not just playing the same game over and over again. You know, playing MMOs the way it was supposed to be and experiencing new content. So with that said, I'm going to keep this one relatively short, seeing as all my other videos for the last little while have been really, really long. Yeah. I'm really curious to see what your guys' opinion is on this topic in the comment section. I mean, as usual, I try to read every single comment to the best of my ability. I'm curious to see what the consensus is on this one in general. I know there's going to be some, you know, vanilla purists out there who want nothing at all to be done to the game. And definitely some guys who are going to be, you know, an absolute distrust about Blizzard's ability to deliver quality content or a quality experience uh, nowadays. Yeah. Whatever your opinion, I'd like to yeah, hear a little it bit. regardless. 
with that said boys make sure to like comment subscribe for more content like this i hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll see you on the other side peace i know when to pay the front line take the don'ts okay so that's my main worry uh, with this whole like classic thing and like the classic plus is that Blizzard's gonna add some dumbass new shit into classic WoW and it's gonna ruin the game, right? And uh, I, I really think that's a huge risk. What I would want them to do more than I've said this before, like more than anything, just make an expansion for classic WoW that's not BC, and that way people that want to play the old classic WoW can do it, and people that want to play classic plus can do that too. But I think they should focus on TBC. Like, they should do TBC, do 1.13 after TBC? I mean, maybe. We'll see. Wait, yes? Wait. Okay. Here's my opinion. I think that they can't redeem current WoW. I don't think that they can. Why do I think that? Uh, it's because there are so many different types of ways that they've bloated the game that it is impossible to redeem the current game. There's no way they can make it appealing for people in the same way that they used to. The only way that they can do it, in my mind, is to start back from square one, classic, and regroup from there. And maybe it won't work. I don't know. But it seems like it would be a better idea. Yeah, they should start over. It's like whenever I roll the mage, and I realize that warriors were a lot better, and I quit... Right, so let's see here. Be great as long as they're not catch up mechanism uh, mechanics, so progression's not destroyed. That's definitely true. I, I agree with that 100%. As long as level cap knows, never goes over 60, you'll be fine. No flying. I don't know about this like whole no flying thing. Like I, I, I think if they do classic plus content, I wouldn't want to see any flying because cl like flying mounts were kind of like a BC thing. Like could they have some element of like flying in like a certain zone? Like I don't know. Maybe that'd be cool. But in general, I would kind of agree with that. Yeah, it's definitely true. Uh, had those horsemen in classic and guild bank. Yeah, I'd like to see guild banks in classic. That 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 would be good. Um, like obviously like the idea of like having one person hold all the gear, you know, there is a higher element of trust that you have to have with the guild. So that kind of creates like that social atmosphere and the expectations, but it's still not necessarily something that I would want to do, right? Your stats. Wait, what do you mean your stats? Oh, right. My viewer analytics. You guys want to see how many females I have watching my stream?